So it's been a while. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get It Faced here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to give me a follow there. And welcome to my channel if you are new here. We do some knitting and crocheting content and today I wanted to share with you a tutorial for how to embroider something onto your finished hand knit or hand crocheted item. You can even do this on a thrifted sweater or just like a hand-me-down sweater or anything really that you want to give new life. So I see all the time on my Instagram Explorer page people embellishing sweaters that they've made with little baubles, with daisies or flower motifs or stars. It's really popular and I think it's a really cute way to customize even further either a handmade piece that you've made or just a, a sweater that you like. So I want to share with you a couple ways that you could get started doing that today. And I'm going to show you on a couple different styles of knitting so you get the idea of kind of how it works. And then you, with this tutorial, you can go ahead and embellish something that you have. Speaking of embellishing, I wanted to give a shout out to Bellish for sponsoring this video. I've worked with them before and really enjoy their free knitting pattern generator app. And I'm going to give you my honest review and opinions of the product right now. And then we'll get into the tutorial. Bellish is a free app currently available for iOS users with an Android version coming soon. There are also over a thousand free patterns available on their website if you cannot access the app. But in the app, they have really unique and cute ready-made patterns available, and they have patterns that you can customize down to the garment type, stitch, yarn size, and fit. So if you're new to knitting, it has very basic options to advanced patterns all ready to use. It just puts a lot more fun back into knitting to me when you can make these small changes yourself. Your piece becomes just all the more personal. These are some toe-up socks that I have designed that I wanted to make this winter, and they are pushing out new patterns and content every week. So even if you're a crocheter, be on the lookout for some patterns coming soon. If you are interested, check out the link in the description to download the Bellish app or visit their website. Thank you again to Bellish for sponsoring this video, and let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I have here a sweater that I made this year with some fingering weight and some lace mohair weight yarn held together. So it's about a DK weight and you can see it's knit mostly in stockinette. So this will be very easy to work into very standard stitch definition. And I wanted to add in some daisies like you can see here. I've added one um, that are pretty easy to add on and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I thought the nice white slash ivory would look pretty here. You could do whatever color you want, obviously. You could do multiple colors and mix in other kind of motifs as you do this, but I'm gonna show you the daisy. It's very easy. So I have here some of Lily Yarns Sugar and Cream Cotton Yarn, and I'm just going to thread that onto a darning needle Cotton yarn here will be very good because it does not have any stretch. So um, once it's on there, it will really stay in place. So I just want to have my hand underneath so that I'm sure that I'm only working on to the one panel that I want this to be on and I'm not accidentally working through both because then you could never get it on. So to start, I just have about a foot of the yarn here. That's what it'll take for one flower. And I'm going to poke through from the underside where I want the center of the daisy to be. And then I'm going to hold with my hand on the other side the end of the yarn. I don't really need to put a knot into place. Um, I'm just going to hold it with about two inches in my hand. So to start, again, this is going to be the center of the flower. We are going to work exactly back into the center and then come back up in the same stitch where we want the end of the first petal to be. So I'm gonna give it about three stitches here and I'm gonna work up. And then before I pull this all the way through, I want to loop into here um, and make sure that these are both coming out in the same way. And then I want to pull this through. And that is going to give us our first petal. Now to secure this, I'm going to work back just behind where I have the stitch coming out and I'm going to put a stitch back there. And then in the same fell swoop, I'm going to come back through in the center of our flower. So back where we, working, we worked into in the beginning. And then I'm going to pull all the way through. And that is our first petal. 
This is very similar to the blanket stitch that you may know if you are an embroiderer. So I want to have five petals. That's kind of standard for a flower like this. So I'm going to work another one. And I'm going to work back into the center of the flower and out to where I want that petal to end. And then I'm going to loop my working yarn through and I'm going to pull so that the stitch catches the loop. And I'm going to then, um, I'm going to tack that in place again by working just behind where I came out of. You can actually work exactly where you came out of. It shouldn't matter because this loop will hold it into place. And then in the same stitch, I'm gonna come back through the center. So this is pretty easy and quick, especially if you are familiar with embroidering or sewing at all you will get this down very quickly. And then I just wanna pull tight, but not too tight, so that um, it kind of scrunches up the stitches around it. And then I'm going to work another one by, you guessed it, starting in the middle, coming out where I want that petal to be, maybe a little longer. Um, I kinda of like it when the petals are a little bit different hand sized, or different sized, because it kinda of plays into the fact that this is obviously hand broidered. That's kind of the point. Um, and then I'm just going to pull that taut and tack it into place by working right back where I did and back through the center. And that is our third petal looking good. You can make these wider by adding two of these little tacks like to each of the corner if you want. You can make your petals different sizes. Um, it's really totally up to you. Again, this is all about customization. I think I want to work right there. Let me just check. Yeah, so I kind of could have cut, the, cut this yarn piece a little bit longer, but I'm going to work back through the center. I lost my piece there a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this tight. It's easiest if you hold the piece with your other hand. And then I'm going to tack just behind it so that is secured and come back through the front and pull taut. And then I'm going to work my final loop in the same way. Okay, and then I just secured that last loop with that little stitch. And there I have my daisy all embroidered. And I think these look really cute on sweaters just for some added texture. You can add them onto a tank top for more of a summery vibe. And you can even do this in different textures of yarn versus like what you're knitting on. Like I have here, I added one in kind of this roving texture, um, really using these same exact steps. And I wanna show you that I did this on a tank top and I really like the way that it turned out. This has a lot of texture already, but then I just added in some daisies. Some of you guys um, who have been on this channel for a while may remember this top that I made last summer, which was in like my summer knits video. And I just added in these flowers and I can show you how I did that. Um, I used Crazy Sexy Wool by Wool and the Gang, um, and it's just in their ivory colorway. Again, you need about the same length, so I took about a foot of this, and this is very loosely spun yarn. Um, so really, because this is much too thick, it's a chunky weight yarn, kind of to embroider this, I think this would make like really pretty polka dots or bobbles you could make pretty quickly. Um, but I took it and I cut a strand and I actually unwound it, just very carefully and slowly pulling it apart. Because it's so loosely spun, it'll just kind of break apart into basically raw wool. And then that from that strand, you can make two of these same daisies. And I just put this on my same, um, I put it on my same darning needle and did exactly the same steps and got these flowers to look like this. So I can show you um, again how to do it with this. I will actually show you on this texture because I feel like it'll come out a little bit better on camera. Um, but you could do this really on any type of knitting or crocheting or even just a plain sweater maybe you thrifted that you wanna add some spice to or a t-shirt, totally up to you. Um, 
Again, I'm just holding that end underneath with my hand and I'm going to work. Now with roving, you do have to be careful about splitting the yarn or snagging it because it's definitely much more sensitive, but I'm going to work where I want that center to be. And I'm gonna make this maybe a little bit bigger because um, the yarn is thick. So I'm gonna come out where I want the end of the petal to be and pull through to create my first petal. Again, being careful not to snag this. And then I'm gonna tack that back in place by working right behind where I came out of and then come out through the middle in the same stitch and that will tack down the end. And this gives a really cute effect. I like the way this looks in this um, style yarn. I will put some um, similar yarns to this. Lion Brand Wool Ease actually is probably your best bet for like if you only wanted to embroider something with it because the crazy sexy wool is pretty expensive um, just to be doing this with. So that one was probably your best bet if you wanted to do this. There is my second petal. I'm going to work into the middle and then back out to create a third petal. Make sure I loop underneath, pull through gently, of course, because we don't want to ruin the integrity of our knitting. Go back and into the middle. It's like just when you think you've finished a knit piece and you're like, oh, all the work's done. There's really so many different things that you can add to it and just, you could keep working on a sweater for actually ever if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to pull, maybe I'll just do this like four because I don't think I'm gonna have enough yarn. Um, and then we can kind of see what that would look like if that's pretty. I'm gonna loop through. I should have cut this a little bit longer. Spread it out, make sure we're all good. Send it back to the back. Kind of looks like a clover if you're making like a St. Patrick's Day. And you could even take like another color, say you have yellow, you could put that in the center, make a little bobble. Okay, and then we can also add in a center with um, this which is called a French knot. So I'm just going to thread this through my darning needle again. I'm going to come through the center of the flower and just hold the excess in my hand again. And then I'm going to take the yarn and wrap it around the needle about five times. And then I'm going to work slightly above where I entered and I'm going to pull through, fluff it up to make sure she's okay. And then you could secure these ends. Um, and that is how you can add a center to your piece. You could do this in yellow, in um, whatever color you want, just to add some fun texture. Or you could also just add them around your sweater to, to um, make some bobbles in whatever color or however many together to get that vibe. And this is really just a fun way to customize your knits more. I really like the way that this pink one turned out with the daisies. It's really sweet and summery. If you liked the video or found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe below for more content. And hopefully next week I have out my temperature blanket update. I've been a little bit behind, but I'm hoping in the next two weeks I can get that out to show you guys. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.